Hi, this is Tapcat. Welcome to my 50th video special. Today we're going to do something a little different and break down one of the XCOM terror missions I posted some time ago. I will do my best to break down what happened in the mission that I should have done differently, as well as where I believe there really wasn't anything else to be done. And I'd like to ask that you share your views in the comments, whether you agree or believe I'm missing something. Before we go further, I'd just like to point out the link on the screen to the original video. So if you'd like, you can watch the full version to form your own opinions before you hear my thoughts. Either way, let's get started and take a look at that mission. The challenges actually started before we even left the base. Going into a terror mission, you want the strongest group you possibly can get. But two of my best soldiers, a heavy and a sniper, were in the hospital. And as you can see, they were almost out, but that doesn't really get it done. So I had to make do with a squatty and a rookie in their place. Now, I have to admit, to this day, I'm not sure I really know the best way to approach this map. It seems like every time I come here, I get virtually every alien that there is dumped on top of me within a handful of turns. So it's certainly possible that uh, I have not quite worked out the best approach. At any rate, let's move on. The first thing I do is to bring my assault forward. Now, I did not go behind cover, partly because I was mostly expecting chrysalids. Whether moving this far forward the first move was a good idea, I think is questionable. Do I really want to trigger the first group this soon? Or should I have moved them behind like the red car and the green van staying back? Well, either way, uh, she does have a good shot. I took it and it almost killed this guy. Next thing I do is move my heavy over to the left. The idea here is I'm just trying to get her a better angle on the chrysalid. It's not as high a percentage as I would have hoped, but it's acceptable and she gets the job done. So, so far that's one chrysalid up, one chrysalid down, two chrysalids that have run off and hidden somewhere, or maybe a better way to say it is that they went off to kill civvies. I don't move most of the soldiers behind cover because I'd rather just have the extra distance from the chrysalids. But we go on overwatch in case any of them come back. At this point, everybody is lined up and it's time for the aliens to do whatever they are going to do. And this is what I'm talking about when I say this map tends to dump a lot of aliens in my lap. I got lucky in the sense that these two scurried off, but I do now have another group of activated chrysalids. And so I don't have the luxury of thinking, you know, the first time I see them, they won't be aggressive or anything like that. I also have to worry about, you know, which direction enemies are going to come from and knowing that there's just more out there that could pop out from pretty much anywhere at any point. And again, when they do pop out, they'll be aggressive because they are already activated. So at this point, I'm trying to figure out whether I should move anybody forward, whether I should move my assault back. I'm torn because on the one hand, you want to try to rescue civilians and, and also hunt aliens. And then on the other hand, uh, you don't want to just rush headlong to your death. Obviously, I did end up choosing to move forward. And the mistake that I made was putting anyone on overwatch when my turn was not over. Notice now I move Cook forward. And even though he stepped directly between two people who had already moved forward, that was the exact spot needed to trigger another group of three chrysalids. So that makes seven that now are activated, even though we don't know where most of them are. Now, Cook is going to try to make amends by taking a shot, but he does not connect. 
Fortunately, he's not the only one that has a shot he can take. So the next man in line does tag him. And that leaves Michelle Rodriguez with a 79% chance. And she cashes it in. So once again, the one chrysalid who had actually come forward and made himself a target, he did get taken out. Awesome. I move my last person forward. And the idea here, I guess, is just you're trying to form sort of a wedge of potential fire that if any chrysalid moves forward, you have a bunch of guns that you can put on it, whether it's on Overwatch or when my turn starts. And it is working up to a certain point. Of course, we're missing a lot of reaction shots because, you know, that's sort of what happens. But we also are doing some damage. We are seeing some of these chrysalids coming out of the woodwork, so that's a little scary. But not as scary as seeing this cyber disc, because now there's a whole new slant to things. And from this point forward, for the rest of the mission, I become so conflicted about what tactics to use. Part of me wants to move back as close to the border of the mission map as I can to get away from the chrysalids, you know, give myself room, and also in the hope that I'll move outside of the cyberdisc's sphere of you know, vision and concern, so to speak. I wasn't 100% sure he had activated, but moving out there with absolutely no cover was also scary because if he does move forward, I mean, he's just going to blast my guys to nothing. Um, so likewise, staying where I am seems like the worst possible thing I can do because then... I'm not only closer to the chrysalids, but again, I still have no cover if that disc moves forward. So my choice is move everybody behind the van and not be able to fire at chrysalids with virtually anybody or stay where I am and potentially just get killed by everything. To say that I was not excited about those choices <laughs> is an understatement. And as you can see now, I haven't edited this section at all. I'm, I'm just sitting here dithering at the time I'm doing the playthrough. I mean, I do not know what to do. And truly, as I sit here today and I've watched this video and I've thought about this mission many times, I do not really know what the most correct thing to have done was. I would love to be able to reload a save and try one tactic, then, you know, play that through, reload, try something else. But this was done in Iron Man mode, so you get the chance that you get and, um, you know, that's it. You can only guess after that. So after much dithering, I do finally move back behind the van. And now this is going to be the beginning of a trend that also had a lot to do with the problems that I faced. She has a 79% chance to hit and she blows out the back of that truck instead. Now, you know, that happens. You basically have a four in five chance of hitting when uh, you have a 79% chance. It's not a guarantee, but... As we go through, just pay attention to the number of times there's a 70-80% chance that misses. Uh, here, Vasquez is going to take one in the high 60s, basically a 2 and 3 chance, and she misses. Next up is Painkiller Jane. And she has a very good chance again. This is three and four. Now she manages to hit this, which is good because we are in desperate need of clearing this battlefield, right? We have that cyber disc covering up there. We know there's more chrysalids in the area that are already activated. And we have two that are close enough. They could potentially kill somebody 
if they're not taken out. So, you know, I'm desperate to put one of these things down. And now instead, a 70% chance shot just goes wide. But that's okay, right? We have another soldier just waiting in line. So we'll go ahead. He has a 65% chance shot. Oops, another miss. So now I'm down to my last soldier. At the beginning of this turn, I had been hoping above all else that I could kill the two chrysalids and then focus on the cyber disc with all of my firepower the following turn. Now I'm almost done with this turn and I literally do not even know if I can take out one chrysalid. So at this point, I give up on my plan because I obviously know there's going to be at least one alive. And so I do something born of ignorance. At this point in my XCOM career, for lack of a better word, I did not realize that melee works very differently than uh, ranged attacks. So it has a 100% chance to hit. Smoke grenades do you no good whatsoever. And so I used her turn not to attack and possibly do some good, but to throw a smoke grenade. Now, it is possible that it would do some good against the cyber disc, but honestly, that wasn't why I threw it. I won't pretend otherwise. Uh, I get a little bit lucky here because you can see one chrysalid attacked a civilian, another one decided to run upstairs, and he apparently also killed a civilian. Um, but I am uh, punished, on the other hand, because now another group of two chrysalids has come out. Now the cyber disc is kind of wandering around and he does not move forward and take an aggressive posture, thank goodness. But he didn't really go away either. And so the threat of him continues to hang over me and it will continue to be an issue as I figure out what to do next. Now, once again, I feel like we catch a bit of a lucky break when this cyber, uh, excuse me, chrysalid goes to work on a civilian. It's kind of a tough round for, for the civilians in the area, but hey, we're still alive. Now, I believe the chrysalid is taking advantage of our smoke grenade, so this is pretty awesome. Um, you know, I'm getting no benefit from it, but he is. But then again, he really didn't get a benefit because I managed to hit him either way. Now what you see is my heavy is out of ammo, so she's going to have to reload, but, it, but we did at least take the closest chrysalid out. And in, since her rifle is out of ammo, I decide to use a rocket. We're going to hit two chrysalids as well as stop uh, one or two civilians from rising as zombies. I don't remember which now. But that seems to me at the time and now to be a more than adequate use of a rocket, especially when I'm as desperate as I am to do any damage whatsoever. I haven't talked a lot about target selection up to this point, but all I'm doing is really focusing on whichever chrysalids are closest to me for the most part. Uh, with the exception of the rocket, where obviously you're looking for a cluster. So uh, Painkiller Jane took a shot at this guy because he's now the most imminent threat and managed to hurt him. Uh, but then that's immediately followed up with another high percentage miss. So once again, I'm starting to get low on characters that are going, or soldiers that are going to be able to fire and I still have a living chrysalid close enough that it could easily kill one of us uh, on its turn. This rookie has a very good position and he has strong shots at both of the chrysalids that are nearby as well as the cyber disc. It's only the two drones, which I don't really care about at that point anyway, that he you know, doesn't have a good shot on. In the end, I go for the closest chrysalid. Now, that may have been a mistake. I don't know what the average damage result is on the standard machine gun. 
uh, maybe it is two points of damage instead of three because if that's true, I should have gone for the chrysalid farther away to just get a kill. Uh, but obviously my need was much greater to shoot at the closer one, and so that's what I did. I'm not positive if that was correct or not. Now here, I moved this guy out specifically so he could get a shot, and he misses a 70% chance. So now I'm really just kind of twisting in the wind. I have a chrysalid that's more than close enough to kill one of my guys. And it's just a question of whether the AI will choose to do that or not. It's painful. I had to sit through approximately 500 alien moves. But eventually we get to the chrysalid. He does in fact decide to try to kill one of my soldiers. But I catch a break. Reaction fire puts him down. So up to this point, still no casualties. In fact, none of us have even taken uh, a single point of damage. But the scariest thing that could possibly happen occurs now, which is that disc moving forward. And he flips a grenade right into the cluster I've got by that car. On top of that, the car is about to explode, so I cannot stay there. And I also have all ambiguity removed about whether, you know, he's going to be aggressive or not aggressive. What I want to do at this point is use every single soldier, if I have to, to just kill this stupid cyber disc right now. Unfortunately, as you can see, Michelle Rodriguez is all out of ammo. And if you remember, we used my heavies rocket last turn because she was all out of ammo so no bullet swarm no heat ammo from her uh, she's all empty and so that leaves me you know a very weak starting point now i go ahead and i start with this guy because he's already behind full cover and obviously i'm going to fire as much as i can at the cyber disc so it's an easy way to get things started without going all in unfortunately despite the fact that he had a very solid chance to hit i once again in fact missed i then considered moving my support my best support over behind that truck but I got nervous about that because I remembered seeing a chrysalid jump on top of the cab. So if I send her over there, is she just going to be mauled by that thing? With her health as low, there's no question he can get a one-shot kill. So instead, I opt to move over to the van, even though I know that means she's not going to get a shot at the cyber disc. Once that decision was made, I had given up on killing the disc this turn. So the main thing that I regret is not moving behind that truck over on the left. That would have given me, um, you know, flanking opportunities. It would have split my guys up a little bit. There was definitely danger in that course, but there was danger having us, you know, all in one place like that as well. I think at the time, uh, again, I was still in the back of my mind thinking about the chrysalids and that if I could somehow manage to kill the disc, then we'll all be tightly packed. And if a chrysalid dares get close to us, we'll just burn them down. But I don't know that this was the right way to go. It's actually possible neither method was particularly good. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. It Was this a Kobayashi Maru no-win scenario? Or did I just make a bad mistake here? At either rate, you'll also notice I'm doing things like I had no choice but to move Vasquez at a dash and she was out of ammo so now that means she did nothing this turn except move and she will do nothing next turn except possibly reload and be a target for aliens i did have my main support heal herself uh, from the grenade damage 
I'm really trying to survive this if possible. We move our final soldier, a squatty support, back behind the van. So it's official. We are all in just one big group hug. And I reload Rodriguez. I think she's going to be the only one with a full uh, complement of ammo. And the car blows up as we knew it would. And now I have to sit helplessly and wait to see what the aliens are going to do to me. We see our first zombie, hardly a shocking sight after the number of civilians that got tagged by the chrysalids. Fortunately, he shambles away, but we see plenty of the little bugs scurrying around looking for someone to kill. And for the most part, they're keeping their distance. I would definitely say I caught a lucky break when the cyber disc missed. But um, overall, things are not going bad at all here. And then it does get a little scary right here because this guy was just one tile short of being able to attack and kill one of my soldiers. I spent some time working my way through the group, seeing who had what percent chance to kill what. Obviously, my top priority at this point is the chrysalid because he is going to kill a soldier next turn. He needs to die. The next most priority is the cyber disc. And if that isn't enough, there is another chrysalid close enough that he could kill one of my guys. At least he has that potential. Uh, as you can see, some soldiers are fully out of ammo. Others are very low. So to say this is a nerve-wracking situation uh, really doesn't cover it. Every action you take is just so critical. In the end, I decided to have the soldier who was the most threatened open fire on the chrysalid. She certainly wasn't going to fire the drone. She did manage to take half of its life, so that's a solid start. I could have taken a 100% chance shot with Cook here, but the four damage that we need is going to be a bit of a lucky shot for him. And also the fact that he is almost out of ammo makes me really want to reload if I possibly can. Whereas I know that Rodriguez has a full laser rifle and she also has a very high chance to hit. So in a lot of ways, it makes more sense to take the shot with her. I do exactly that and she burns him down. So that's one threat eliminated. With that done, I go ahead and have Vasquez reload because other than being able to throw a grenade, she can literally do nothing. And that, by the way, is why I didn't reload until after the chrysalid was killed. Is if it came down to it, I could have used that grenade to finish it off. I wanted to use... Uh, Sue Storm's suppression ability on the cyber disc, but she couldn't see him. So I settled for killing the drone that she could see. It's very possible that I should have put her on Overwatch instead. I'm not really sure what the best move is, uh, but she might have done some damage to that chrysalid or even kept him from moving closer. That would have had more value, I think, than killing the drone. Once again, I am going to use a smoke grenade here. Uh, I did believe at the time it would help against all of the opponents we're facing. I know that's not the case now. Nonetheless, it isn't a horrible use because the cyber disc is very much threatening us. And it isn't like he had a lot of other options, really. Um, what I probably would have been better served to do is to have him reload. We had so many soldiers that were low on ammo and our, it just seemed like our firepower was constantly minimized because of that. 
So that is something I would do differently if I were playing this mission now is I would probably skip the grenade. But uh, what happened, happened. And now this is what happened. So our first casualty, Painkiller Jane, got ripped to pieces by a chrysalid. That sent Vasquez into a panic. And unfortunately, she did not hit her target. That might have actually been useful. Rodriguez got a reaction shot. Now, see, this is what I was saying. If Sue Storm had gone on Overwatch instead of killing the drone, she might have finished this thing. And she didn't. Instead, I lose another soldier. So, I think really the correct play was to have gone on Overwatch. And now the wheels are really coming off the wagon. Because just like that, the cyber disc has made his move and he critically wounds Cook. Now, he's only a squatty and the other guy was only a rookie. <laughs> but let me tell you, when you lose three of your six soldiers in one pass and you're literally surrounded on all sides by aliens, uh, you're not feeling too good. I'm very aware at this point in the playthrough that I am facing an uphill battle to avoid a complete squad wipe. And I very much did not want a complete squad wipe. So I am desperately trying to think of anything I can do to get out of this. So in the end, I move Rodriguez around the other side away from the disc put her in a position to hopefully kill this thing, which she does. We still have a chrysalid alive. We still have a cyber disc alive, both of them untouched, by the way. Now Sue is getting low on ammo. She's got one shot left. And my one remaining soldier is panicked uh, back there with the <laughs> chrysalid in the disc. I can't do anything about moving her. Uh, it's good to know, by the way, that she has a full magazine of ammo, though. So now, once again, I'm torn. Do I have her reload? Do I go on Overwatch? What, what do I do? And, you know, again, as I sit here today, what was the right thing to do? Well, probably not this, but it is debatable. Overwatch, again, between the two soldiers, they might get a quick kill on the chrysalid if it comes around the side. But the flip side of that argument is, um, you know, then she's useless on her turn. No big shock. Vasquez gets killed. I mean, she's flanked by a cyber disc. I couldn't do anything about that. And, of course, my two soldiers that were killed get up and <laughs> or two of the three get up and as zombies and puts a big hurt on Rodriguez. And if you can see a way out at this point, then you're a lot smarter than I am. Yeah, the disc comes over and he creams Sue. So Michelle is the only one left. And just for good measure, a drone kills a civilian. And now I have <laughs> a poisoned soldier, no med kits. Is her health down to one? No, it's at five. But she's also panicked. So at this point, tactics are out the window because literally all I can do is watch and I think it's hysterical that the chrysalid just leaves. It's like, hey, you're not even worth finishing. I'll just leave you to my zombie horde. And even they don't seem to be all that interested. But finally, one of them says, all right, I'll kill you. I'm not sure. That might have been the disc. That's the end of the mission, obviously. A horrible failure in every sense of the word. 
I have pointed out areas that I believe I could have done better. Whether they would have made the difference in winning or losing, I really don't know. Uh, I look back on all the misses of the 70, 80% chance shots. If I'd have hit more of those, taken more chrysalids off the table early, would that have mattered? I'm not even 100% sure of that. I guess it depends on how many of them you could convert into hits. Um, but I've had my say at this point. So if you watch this and you have an opinion about something, whether it's something I could have done better or um, how the outcome might have changed, I'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up here. So thank you very much for watching, and we hope to see you again.